Congratulations on securing this financing. Um, how did this SoftBank investment then come about? Give us the, uh, the inside story. Well, SoftBank's mission is to, to invest in the number one player in each sector. Greensill over the last eight years has significantly disrupted the way working capital is delivered the world over. And SoftBank uh, wanted to follow in the footsteps of General Atlantic by backing our continued growth on a, on a global basis. Mm, Ruth, jump in. Lex, the, the valuation of your fund that we're hearing at 3.5 billion, it's about double what it was when General Atlantic came in last year. At this stage, are you you considering an IPO at all and what are you going to use the funds for? Certainly. I, I'm sure you'll appreciate having just accepted uh, a very large investment from, from SoftBank. We're certainly not looking to, uh, to raise additional capital at the moment. Uh, we run a very profitable business. We're looking to use this capital to enable us to continue to grow into new markets, in particular Brazil, India and China. Uh, and as for uh, an IPO, we, we'll always consider options uh, as, uh, as the times go by. And is the, is the plan that SoftBank and the Vision Fund takes a board seat? Are they going to be very actively involved in dictating the, or you know, influencing the direction of the business? Will they be on the board? Yes. So uh, the SoftBank Vision Fund will have representatives on our board. Is that uh, going to change things for you? Well, we'll find out. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's fair to say that uh, SoftBank's mission is to uh, to back companies as they are as opposed to endeavouring to redesign them and we see multiple opportunities for us not only to continue down our current path but actually to work with SoftBank and the other companies within their portfolio uh, to deliver our technology globally. And just coming back to valuation, there's been some talk around whether there's a bubble in the broader tech sector, especially with Uber's listing last week, which then the shares went down considerably. You share two of Uber's investors with SoftBank and General Atlantic. Do you think there is a bubble in tech and what do you make of the listing last week? Certainly. It's very exciting to see the, uh, the listing. I think it's fair to say that, uh, that Uber, like ourselves, are, are busy disrupting uh, an existing market. I think the volatility in pricing probably reflects um, broader macro trends that are taking place, the, the risk of a trade war between uh, the US and, uh, uh, and China, uh, as opposed to necessarily kind of a view about specifically what's going on. But disrupting entire kind of economies takes time and therefore a long-term view is mm. critical. Uh, Lex, you say you're disrupting this industry. Supply chain finance, I mean, anyone who studied accounting has heard of it. It's been around for 100 years or so. Uh, so what is it that is ripe for disruption? What is it that's different about the way you do it? Why not go to a, if you're a company and you need this kind of, uh, this kind of funding, why not go to a big bank with a maybe bigger balance sheet? You bet. Well, if that were the case, we wouldn't have grown to be as big as we are. Uh, the reality is that we've harnessed technology um, our AI-driven uh, delivery of, uh, of finance plus the capital markets to deliver credit to over 8 million customers around the world over the, uh, over the last eight years. Um, that's unprecedented and has propelled us to, uh, to the market-leading position we have today. And Lex, we've made it so far without the dreaded B word, but as a UK fintech, what do you think of the environment for growth in this country and what impact is Brexit having not just on your business but on the wider sector? Sure. For, for our business, uh, we deliberately chose to make London our centre and so Brexit hasn't changed or the threat of Brexit hasn't changed our view about us being delighted to be here in London uh, in terms of kind of our, our views on we love to see some certainty around what's happening around uh, Brexit, as I'm sure all businesses would, but it's certainly not changing kind of our focus uh, and determination to continue to grow our, our business from, from our London base. Do you think that uh, the, the powers that be in the UK are listening to, to, to unicorn fintech companies such as yourself? I mean, with this and the valuations that Ruth has been talking about there, I, I mean, you might be the UK's most highly valued fintech big unicorn. Is, are the views of businesses such as yours getting through to, to, to politicians? do you think? Do you have a voice? In fact, actually, I do feel we get a, a great hearing from, from government uh, and you know, we have made a positive choice to, to be here in the UK. We couldn't deliver what we do globally without the infrastructure that Britain has. And so you know, we voted with our feet and we expect others will continue to do the same as us. And Lex, you say your business has grown 100% since 2015, which is enviable. But what are the risks to disruptors like yourself and how do you see the growth trajectory? Certainly. Our market share, Ruth, is less than 10 basis points 
out of the, the entire market. And as a consequence, growing at 100% still means that we're really a minor player uh, in the overall market. And so consequently, we expect that we're going to be able to continue to grow at pace as we have. And indeed, the SoftBank's investment, we think, will enable us to grow even faster. But your, your fund with GAM, for instance, it's seen a lot of withdrawals. Are you looking at liquidating that maybe? And how is that relationship? Certainly. We have over 100 investors and asset managers that we work with today. The asset class has grown exponentially over the last few years, um, and we expect that to continue to grow as new investors want to participate in what has previously been a walled garden that others have not been able to participate in, other than a handful of, uh, of banks that uh, have something of an oligopoly. As for the GAM uh, fund itself, uh, certainly it is a short-term money market-like fund and consequently there will be inflows and outflows. That's how it's designed to, uh, to work. I read recently that uh, it's just been given a double A rating. Uh, and uh, as for our relationship with GAM, you know, we have a great relationship with GAM and we expect to continue to, uh, uh, to work with GAM into the future.